better get up and talk. I'm in the wrong house. Can I get in? She's drunk. Right, I'm back. It's going to be okay. Just drink this. What's going on? Who, who are you? Those eyes. Is it? Is that it? Am I dead? You're very much alive, Kestrel. My name is Rasimir. Jordan was my uncle. Of course, your eyes. Now I understand. I'm sorry. I've been quite distant lately. Please, don't mind this mess. It was some badgers that got in through the window. Those pesky badgers. Very nice to see you. Me and your uncle were working together. Trade, mostly. I don't want to be rude, but I've already spoken with Unigost. I've actually met Samborn and Woolred as well. I know about your mission. Very good to hear that. I was never a good liar. That, what? A friend of mine did it. I was, I was never a good liar. That, what? A friend of mine did it pretty well. Yes, your friend Jordan. I knew about that too. Something doesn't seem to have translated quite right there. I see. You know a lot, kid. But no more bullcrap for you then. We were all part of a pack. A family, really. We never had a name or anything. But we did have some reputation in realms far away from here. The pack was all that we had. Until the day it all fell apart. But you probably know about it as well. I don't, actually. No one has told me yet what happened. Well, it seems that the boys would rather tell you about the happy days, but you seem like you're ready to handle the realness as well, don't you? I am. It was 12 years after the pack was fully formed. Over a decade of adventures, mischiefs, tightening of bonds. We still felt young, but the thought of retirement from our operation was getting more and more real. We even had a place picked out where we could grow old in peace. Yeah, you guessed that right. The valley was always our end game place to settle down, but none of us realised that the end is so near. We were staying for a job in a town called Navis. Spent weeks there. Everybody started to get a little nervous, a little frustrated, because Jordan was planning it all on his own. He was always secretive, but we kind of got used to it. But this time, something was off. He kept telling us that he was meeting with some informant. I've seen him a couple of times through a window. Tall as an oak and thin as a straw. Skinny face and juggy ears made him look like a rat. Beady little eyes didn't help him as well. Jordan said he was keeping us out of the loop for the rat man's safety. So we waited. Played dice, drank and waited. When Jordan finally revealed his plan, it sounded like a joke. Weeks of planning for a job so simple. We could do it with our eyes closed. So I'm guessing it wasn't so easy after all. Supposedly, there was a lot of stolen loot in the town hall's treasury, brought in by a corrupted militia. Plan was simple. Get in, steal it, and return to the rightful owners. Child's play. Jordan and Walrud were supposed to make a distraction when Unigost and Sambor went inside the treasury, and me, as usual, was waiting with the horses ready to run. All went according to the plan, no surprises. Sambor and Unigost were loading the cargo onto the horses. When I saw Walrud walking towards us alone, he said that Jordan split up with him and should be right back. I didn't like that. There was no reason for him to split, so I decided to go back and check on him. I could smell his posh perfume from a mile away, so it wasn't hard. I swiftly followed his scent right into the town scribe's chamber, and that's when I saw it. If it wasn't for the ears, I would never have recognised him. His face was bashed in so hard you can almost see the floor through it. Jordan was standing by the rat man's body wiping blood off his hands. He did it with a bottle of mead, which he then took a sip of. I'll never forget how casually he looked in that moment, like it was the most normal thing to do. He hid some kind of book or journal behind his belt, and then he noticed me. For a second there, I saw his true face, his pure reaction to seeing me. It wasn't fear or shame, it was just annoyance. He scowled at me for ruining his plan, for insubordination. This honest reaction even he couldn't control, and just like that, his face changed completely. He was shocked, afraid, out of breath suddenly. Maybe even a tear was glistening in, the, in his eye. He grabbed my hand and said that we need to run, that we are not safe, that he will explain. So we ran to our brothers in arms, got on the horses and escaped. I told everybody what I'd seen. Jordan broke the most sacred of rules, his own rule. He was trying to explain himself, but all we heard was more and more lies. The trust had been broken. We were talking and arguing the whole night. I've got to say, the various tales and the story of this main game. I I think it's bollocks. <laughs> I really do. It seems, unless something ties it together at the end, which it might, so we'll give it its chance and give it its due, but uh, 
we shall see. Hey, Fane, nice to see you. Glad you could make it over. How's it going? Anyway, we'll see where this goes. At dawn, Walrod was the first to leave. We always kind of treated him like our younger brother who forced himself on the journey. But in that moment, he was the most mature of us all. And it was clear that the pack has come to an end. Sambor left right after, then I did the same. Unigos stayed with Jordan. He couldn't live without him. He loved him the most, even more than me. But I was walk when, when I was walking away, I saw that face of Jordan again. Her eyes met for a split second, and they were not sad, but full of contempt. So that's how it happened. I'm sorry, Rasimir. You probably expected something different. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't have thought that it was his fault. In a way, you could say that it wasn't. He only followed his destiny, being true to his nature. What do you mean by that? Your uncle was an extraordinary man. Yeah, that's what everyone's saying. Truly brilliant, ahead of his time, I would say. His mind was able to predict things that should be unpredictable. He read people like books, and with all that excellence came a price. The perfectionist in his brain couldn't cope with losing, with being wrong. Jordan had a really short fuse sometimes. He suffered from constant loneliness. Loneliness? He had you, all of you, the pack, family. Everybody loved him. And yet we were the only thing persistently keeping him down. Caring about us, loving us, it was a burden to him. The emotional ties that made us him, that, that made us him depend. I don't know what that's supposed to read. That made us his dependent? I don't know. Weak, common. And being ordinary for him was worse than death. That's really sad, to be honest. Having us kept him grounded, but he couldn't restrict his ambition. It was like a flesh-eating disease consuming him from within. Being anonymous started suffocating him. Seeing smiles on faces he'd helped wasn't enough. Hearing praises and thanks wasn't enough. He wanted to be acknowledged, to be worshipped, to be feared. I thought he was... I don't know. It, I, I must have misread something at some point because this doesn't quite tie up with the last bit of the story, but hey-ho. I can't believe you're talking about Jordan. I thought he was a hero. I wanted to be like him. Life's hard, kiddo. You can't judge a book by its cover. Same as you can't judge a man by the one thing he did, or by a part of his life. Nothing's just black and white. Yeah, it's funny, that Unigos told me the same thing. He probably knew Jordan better than anyone else, knew the worst of him, but he was a brother to him nevertheless. He couldn't have hurt him. Well, he did have an affair with Jordan's woman. So you know about that as well. Seems that Unigos and you grew really close together. Yes, he did. I did. And I'm sure that Jordan knew all about it. Well, that might explain the sudden change in character and the hatred and the violence and stuff. Work is too busy at the moment, Thane, but taking the evening off. You know, you need time off. Everyone needs time off from work. But uh, I'm doing fine, thanks. Yeah. I'm uh, feeling a bit like I've got a, like a beginning of a cold that's probably not going to develop, but other than that, I'm fine. Yeah, the story's a bit, uh, bit off, I think. But anyway. Are you serious? That man could deduce the colour of a lady's knickers just by hearing her laughter. <laughs> nice, okay. I didn't know that was a thing in medieval times. Why, fair maiden, I hear you guffawing at the jester's chortle. I predict pink panties. I'm sure he knew about me and Unigost. Maybe you could have changed. Maybe if the baby wasn't... Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. Wondering about that would torture me at night. I had a couple of hypotheses, but the thing that speaks to me the most is the simplest of answers. He didn't care. He didn't love me that much to want me all to himself, yet he wanted us to be happy, so he didn't intervene. I'm sure it was funny to him watching us wallow in our lie, like watching children playing a grown man's game. If the baby wasn't born dead, don't be sorry, that's what happened. Maybe he was happy about it, or at least appeared to be. Didn't want to hear me when I was saying that it could be a girl. He wanted a boy, a mini Jordan, to keep him company. But it wouldn't have worked. Not at that time, at least. Why is that? He wasn't his. He wasn't his. Okay, so you knew it was Unigos then. A mother always knows such things. I knew it was Unigos from the moment I felt his heart beating inside me. But you've never told any of them. No, I felt like the lack of truth was a better solution in that situation. But you don't have to agree with me. Uh, I do agree. There wasn't a good answer. You tried to keep them both happy. And yet I failed at that miserably. Still, you put their happiness before your own. 
let's not talk about it any longer. There's a very important matter I've been getting to. You may think that I'm crazy, but I have to say it. I don't believe that Jordan died of natural causes. What? What are you saying? I think he was murdered. He was murdered? That's insane. What do you know about his death? Not much, actually. Only that he died peaceful in his sleep. That's what Unigos told me. And you just assumed it was due to an illness or old age, correct? Well, I'm assuming that if he'd been bludgeoned half to death and then died peacefully in his sleep, Unigos might have told me. Because <laughs> there's a bit of a difference. Anyway, no, I just mean, I mean, yes, I believe I did. And that's what doesn't add up to me. I knew Jordan. He was always in great shape. We met a few days before his death, actually. He wanted to reconnect. He was happy. It was obvious to me that he was planning something and that, and that wasn't to die in his bed. He didn't have any health problems, but enemies, those he surely had a surplus of. Okay. That actually sounds very convincing. I've managed to find out the location of the medic who was examining Jordan's body and he decided to burn the corpse in the same day, which already seems bizarre. Oh, I have an idea, maybe. I wonder who else saw Jordan's body. I wonder if he's declared himself dead so he can start a new life somewhere. A bit like uh, life on Mars, that sort of thing. Hmm, I wonder. And you've talked with him? No, I wanted to, but my demons caught up with me. Have you told anyone from the pack about your presumptions? No. It may sound harsh, but they're suspects as well. Suspects? You were supposed to be a family. I don't really believe they did it. I certainly hope they didn't, but we can't rule out anything at this moment. So you cannot tell them about any of this. Not until we learn something valuable. Here, I've marked the location of the medic's house on your map. I don't know the exact place. You'll have to find it. Speak with him and report to me. I mean, if you're up for it. Right. This took a lot longer than I expected. And there's a downside to this. I rode here to buy an extra horse. And uh, I think I'm going to get teleported back before I have a chance. Right. I'll be back. Yeah. Straight away. Balls. I really wanted to buy that horse there. Uh, okay, well, let's see where the... It's winter. Let me get my clothes out. That was a long story. A right long story. But yeah, I could see that coming. I, I, I didn't have to ride all the way back to buy another bloody horse. Out the way, Junior. Uh, let's see then. See where that quest will take us. <laughs> Is the boring book done with? I'm sorry if I made that boring. It definitely had... We've got 11 years. Okay, I've got to do these. 11 years. Talk to Elwyn. 400 coin and a longbow. It certainly had a twist in the tail that I wasn't expecting. But yeah, it, it is written very oddly, I've got to say. So talk to Dieter. Let's see where on the map that is. Oh, somewhere around here. Well, I guess, I mean, I've, I've got to go back at some point then. So uh, I think we want sheep. Where do we buy sheep from? Let me, let me ask. Hello. Where can I find farm animals? Sheep. Uh, Baranica. Is that where I'd seen them? Thank you. That's all I wanted to know. I'm going to go and buy some. See you soon. But before we do that, we need to find something else to sell. We need to... Oh, there's got to be some crafting and stuff I need to do. There's no farming I need to do in winter, thankfully. But yeah, we'd better pull out all the, um, the bronze and the copper and the tin and stuff. Yeah, I've brought her a gift. I've got her to 100% affection. And now I can't... Uh, there's no option to have another baby. Which I'm surprised about. I thought there'd be... Once it was back to 100%, I thought, Oh, well, we're in. We're off. We're going again. But no. Sadly not. We've still got a bit of flax. So we've... Oh, we've got lots of flax stalks. Which we're making linen thread out of. Uh, a bit of flax seed. Not enough. We'll let the farmers deal with that and I'll just go and sell the extra. 
Are we filling up in this? Let me get the, uh, the, the tin and stuff out anyway. Let's take all of that. And I will go quickly, quickly craft that in the smithy. Maybe some years have to pass. It's possible. That is possible. I hadn't actually considered that. Chuck the bronze bar in there. Make the tin. So we're going up with 36, 37 bronze bar after this. It's something, I suppose. We'll have to see what we need to make. I better check the tool situation out. Sides, certainly. We'll need to make some bronze sides. Bronze shears. I better get the uh, recipe for that, actually. If we're going to have sheep. I mean, I think we have some. I do find it hilarious that we can smelt 36 bronze bars, or tin bars in this case, quicker than we can make 36 bowls of soup over a massive cauldron. Put that in there, and that in there. Get me the copper. I better bring the stone out, you know, there's a, there's a huge amount of stone. Where is it? Are my people still making bowls? I should probably stop with the the wooden bowl production there seems to be a lot right get all that out and where is the copper copper ore all that out right i'm just gonna dump this on the floor and then hope it doesn't disappear anytime soon stone come on oh x drop Can I not move? Have I got... Can I not carry all the copper ore in one go? Are you... Really? Bloody hell. Uh, any game to recommend from the Steam Halloween sale? I haven't had a look and see what's available. Is it just horror games? Or is there a bit more... Um, a few more options than that? Am I carrying sticks or anything? Some rot. Just too much copper ore, I think. Right, I'm going to have to drop some of that. In fact, I drop half of it, that'll do. Okay, we've got a good copper harvest then. That's a that's definitely a bonus. Um, what would I be looking up to? I'm looking out for things like um Days Gone, which is yeah, kind of got a it's got like a horror -y kind of Halloween. It could. You could fit it into the Halloween category, couldn't you? Um so there's that. I'm hoping that's on sale. All right, so it's not only that stuff. Kingdom Come Deliverance is in there. Well, that would be a recommendation for a start. That's a fantastic game. Uh, what else? Uh, Witcher 3 is the best game of all time, in my opinion. Well, it's my favourite game of all time. Like that. Uh, if it's not on the Steam sale, it's in the GOG sale. Seven quid, I think, for the Game of the Year edition, which has all the expansions, which are like mini-games in themselves. They're huge and fantastic stories. So that's always a recommendation. If we've got, you've done all the witches, have you done the Divinity Original Sin 2? I don't know if they're on sale, but again, if they are, recommended. And if you haven't, Divinity Original Sin 1, get the Definitive Edition. You've done them already? Okay. I was going to say get the Definitive Edition because it's got stacks of extra um, speech in it. Voiceover is the word I'm looking for. Let's put the copper bar in there and go and get the rest of this ore. What else? Uh, what else? Take all that. Thank you. I don't know what else. Oi! I was there. Get off. As soon as my back's turned. Uh, what else would I recommend? I do have a list of recommended games. I haven't played Outer Wilds, so I can't comment on that. I played Outer Worlds, the... Was it Obsidian that made that? RPG space shooter thing. That was that was pretty decent. I enjoyed it. I do have a list of recommended games that I've reviewed on my reviews channel. So do have a look down the playlist. Anything that I really enjoy, I, I put in a separate playlist for recommended. There's a few different ones in there. I've got some more reviews to go up at some point. I need to work through them. Uh, what, what are the sort of games you like, Fane? Give me some, some ideas. What sort of stuff do you like? Yeah, Piranha Man, I got a horse. 
and I've already ridden it over a cliff and nearly killed it. All in one session. But we've got a horse. I went to buy some more, but the uh, the game threw... Well, the game didn't throw me out. The seasons threw me out. And it comes to the end of a season, I wasn't quick enough to buy the horse before being teleported back. Let's turn this into bronze. Maximum amount. Uh, Soft Ohms, thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream. <laughs> Better luck killing it off next time. Tafane, you like everything but first-person shooter games. What about strategy games like Crusader Kings 3, Hearts of Iron 4? I mean, those are quite deep strategy games, but Crusader Kings 3 is very good. And manga styles? Oh, I don't have any experience with those at all, I would say. But I do know some people in the chat like them. So you find those type of strategy games a bit too slow. Fair enough. Have you played Dawn of Man? It's... Uh, it's like a real-time strategy. Looks a bit like Age of Empires, I suppose. But it's set in uh, prehistory. And it's, it's all about basically managing a little tribe of cavemen. Uh, not cavemen, that's not the right thing. Uh, Neolithic hunter-gatherers type, and earlier, I think, than that. Developing them from hunter-gatherers into a little farming community. It's much like this, but with a top-down view. Is the best way to describe it, where you have to get your villages and population increased, expand and develop into farming, protect them from wild animals and uh, other raiders. That was one of my star finds. I, I absolutely loved that game. I thought it was amazing. All right, I better go get some sticks and some logs out of the supply. That is actually part of the sale. I have a review of that and a guide to it as well, but on my original channel, Mark GFL. Um, it is on there and it is a fantastic game that I would strongly recommend. And it's one that's, uh, I don't think it's been recognized enough. It's like a little small indie game. Well, it's not that small, I suppose, but um, it's definitely gone under most people's radar. One worth shouting out. So if you enjoy this, take a look because it might be the sort of thing that you really like. It's another good chill out game as well. So the copper ore, oh, I'll put that back in here. I know I'm spreading them around a bit. We have bronze bars, copper bars. Uh, I'm going to need some logs and some sticks for this next trick. And probably some feathers. Make some more bronze arrows. Yeah, I should make some more bronze arrows, shouldn't I? Right, give me about 50. Sod it, give me a 96 sticks. And then some feathers. I won't need many. Oh, God, I can never find the feathers. 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 I'll take 100 feathers. I'm not going to make that many. Although I, I, I suppose I could. And then they're in stock ready for when I need them. And then as many logs as I can carry, which isn't going to be many because I don't think there's any many in here. 32. I can carry that. Nice, that will do. I'm going to stagger back. Comments seem to say it could use improvements, but the developers have abandoned it. Really? Because uh, it wasn't that long ago. They, Since I played and reviewed it, they added quite a lot of updates. So, and I thought it was great as it was back then, but they've, they've expanded the farming, for, added things like plows and different animals. They've uh, expanded the weapons and armor that you can create to fight off rival raiders and stuff. So, I mean, if it's abandoned now, what, what that actually means is it's finished. Because I considered it excellent and finished at the time I, I played it. Uh, iron tools. We can't have that. We can have bronze tools, though. And is this where we get shears? Buy the scheme for 200. Go on, then. I just need a bronze bar. Two bronze bars. Let's go for three of these. Because they don't require much at all. And that's going to be good for our wool trades. So that's going to be that sorted. I think I need to build another storage back here. Because I do need the space. Especially with the farming going crazy as it is at the moment. I've also got a full Let's Play series up, so you can watch like the first episode or two of that. And that's on my Let's Play channel. 
So if you if you want to check that out, there's that option too. You can just see how it starts at the beginning of the game. What else do you think we're likely to need? Probably some of these. Oh, let's do some arrows, actually, before I, I forget. So the bronze arrows. How many could I do? They require sticks, so that's fine. Oh, I'm not going to be able to... Oh, I've got enough sticks. Silly me. Um, five will do. That's just going to give me 50 bronze arrows, which I can then combine with poison if I wanted to. I don't have the poison yet. Back to this then. We're gonna. We better put uh, what we're likely to run out of. I always need those. I'll have two of those. Oh, why did I make bronze shears? I should have made copper shears because they they can happily use the copper ones, and we don't care about that. Yeah, that would have been fine for shearing sheep with, and I can save the bronze for better things. Not to worry, it's all XP. It all counts. We want... Um, i better make four of those, because sides are important. We might make some copper sides, actually. The staff can use them. I wonder if my smiths are on making something that's, like, useless. Or the guy in the workshop. He's making torches, I think. But what if I've got people crafting stone picks and hoes. I suppose stone hoes aren't too bad. There's always plenty of them. Plenty of sticks and stones lying about. Yeah, I should probably look at the, the total tools in there and see what the situation is. Are we out of anything for bronze? It looks like we are, so we're back to copper. What should we craft? Shovels, axes... Yeah, go on, I better, have, I better have some of these. I'll just go all in and copper axes. And assume we've got enough of the other things lying around. Yeah, it'll be interesting once we start getting wool. Because what did I need that for? That was... I needed wool thread to make a bronze spear. Oh, I think it's just for clothes crafting as well, but that might be where there's a lot of money to be made. But our flax harvest is... well, that's just... yeah. It's always insane, the flax harvest. Still, it's getting us all our XP and our cash, so... That's all good. Right, let's dump everything back in here. Uh, what have we got? Bit of copper bars. The rest can go in the main storage. Let's go take the tools over and see how we're doing. Could go mining again this season. Right, tools. Let's just let's just focus on this. I've got some bronze knives, some copper knives. I wonder if they're using those. Bronze axes, bronze hammers. I can see these taking up the weight. There's a lot of buckets taking up weight. I, I better just check. Don't think anyone's using copper shovels. A fishing spear. Can I actually create those now? So let's put that copper knife away. And the bronze pickaxe. Yep. And I will put not all of them in because I need one bronze scythe out. Three shears. Uh, yep, four copper axes. Simple bags we'll run out of. That's fine. I don't feel pressed to do loads of farming myself now because I've got the immediate XPs unlocked, so that's okay. Apart from the harvesting, the harvesting's the important bit. Uh, so yeah, Dawn of Man is an excellent game worth a look. Uh, what else? Oh, there's another game that uh, I think went unnoticed. Gears Tactics. It's set in the Gears of War universe, so like Gears 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But instead of being a first-person shooter, it's a turn-based tactical squad combat game like XCOM. And I really, really enjoyed it. And I'm surprised that, because uh, the Gears franchise has been really popular, I'm quite surprised that that was not more popular and took off. But that's another really good game. And uh, one of my friends, Gears Tactics. 
Again, I've got a review of that on one of the two channels, possibly on the old one. I forget which it is. But yeah, it's it's worth worth a look. If you like the XCOM style games, that turn-based tactical combat, uh, it's uh, it's a good one. Right, what can I throw in here? Oh, I forgot to check the rot situation, didn't I? Take those onions out. We'll throw them on the floor so they rot down. Anything else rotting? We've got lots of roasted meat, which is good. Loads of regular meat. Probably have loads of rotten eggs before long. Uh, I do need something to eat. Should I take 50 apples? I'll take them and enjoy them. Yeah, what's the rot situation in here? Do we have any? We only have five. Oh, I'll, I'll take it. I'll take your five rot. And we've now got 84 rot. <laughs> That's a bit better. Right, let's dump. Oh, shit, I've just eaten one. Never mind. I've just eaten a rotten onion. That's going to be really nice company tomorrow. Right, I'll put four rot straight back in there because I know that won't make anything. And the other nine, we'll go and craft something with in the barn. And also, there's like a stack of manure, which my farm workers clearly aren't doing the job with it. I should get it out of the, the main storage and put it in here. I might grind that off stream afterwards because, I mean, it's it's like 500 manure. It's, it's insane. And we have a lot of people working here, as you can tell. They look like they've got nothing to do, these these two. What are we short of? Barn two. We are short of rye grain. That'll that'll come right next turn. Next season. Well, tell you what, it's gonna come right next season. Let's put the extra work into manure then. Um fertilizer. It's producing a lot. That's a lot of fertilizer per day. <laughs> You'd think that would get through it all, wouldn't you? But the pigs are evidently quite busy. So the herbal... Oh, God. Everything's broken down. Look. Oh, God. I hate this. I, this I, I despise this part of the game. Repairing buildings. Right, so we're not building stone pickaxes. We don't need to do this anymore, in fact. Let's turn this off in the smithy. Is there anything I can just build and sell? Hose, knives. I mean, it's a smithy. I could make something better. Fishing spears. 